Do you remember what Hyundai was doing back in 2003? It had just finished making the very successful Hyundai XL and XL Sprint, which you could pick up from 13990 drive away from memory. And I think they had a $1,000 or $2,000 cashback deal going at some point as well. Well, now imagine if Hyundai started making a supercar at that point of its lifetime. That's basically what MG is doing now. The new MG Cyberstar made its Australian debut in Sydney this week. Again, they originally debuted the vehicle back in April, uh, landing in Australia with shots of it under the Sydney Harbour Bridge and so on, but they decided to do another debut uh, for some reason, but this time there were a few head honchos there that we could interview and so on, and a, get a bit more up close and personal with the vehicle. But to get back to that Hyundai reference, so 2003 was around 17 years after the brand became you know, a fairly global brand. That's when the XL was launched in many markets around the world in 1986. Now MG, the slogan might be since 1924, but that's as a brand back when it was owned by MG Rover Group in the UK. It was acquired by Sayak Motor in 2007 and has been a Chinese company since. And certainly in Australia, it has only been around since 2017 as a modern brand when it debuted the ZS small SUV. The Cyberstar is a very daring model in my opinion because MG is still quite a young brand as a modern version of the brand anyway. And it would have been like Hyundai launching a supercar back in 2003. I don't think the market would have been ready for that because Hyundai at the time was known for budget vehicles. A bit like MG. It's currently... You know, the cheapest SUV you can buy in Australia is an MG. So to have this supercar basically launch, it's going to be very interesting. It does have quite a few attractive credentials though, and it looks quite nice too. Seeing it in person, it is very low slung, very pointed, long nose, traditional proportions for a super sports car. I know it's not quite a supercar, well in the traditional sense anyway. It's always been a mid-engine or a rear engine vehicle. Well, you could argue this has got a rear engine and a front engine, kind of, uh, but the 0 to 100 performance is definitely in supercar territory. Full specs for Australia haven't been officially confirmed yet, but they say it's 375 kilowatts, which is a bit down on the original output of 400 kilowatts in overseas form, but the 0 to 100 time is 3.2 seconds. Sitting inside, it does feel very modern. It's got three screens across the dashboard. And then another screen down for the climate control. It doesn't look quite as exciting as some super sports cars out there, like a Porsche Boxster or something like that. Certainly not to the supercar level in terms of the materials and the design, but it does look futuristic and looks like a pretty nice, intimate place to be. It does have a decent sized boot as well. It's quite shallow, but it stretches pretty far forward. So you could use this as a weekender for sure. Perhaps the most striking element is the electric scissor doors that raise up and it's got these little sensors on the side of the door like a parking sensor. So if you stand too close the door won't actually open which is very very weird. You've got to sort of push the button to open the door then step back or step you know behind where the rear wheel is basically to allow the door to swing up. It's all just health and safety I guess. It weighs around 1950 kilograms and I've heard it's going to be a little bit more on the softer side compared with the hardcore, very rigid model. So you could argue this is more of a Grand Tourer than a full-on super sports car, despite the 0-100 to 100 performance, but it should be an interesting drive. It doesn't, unfortunately, come with torque vectoring. It's four-wheel drive, but yeah, no clever torque vectoring, and it doesn't come with adaptive dampers, as far as I know, so far anyway. As I said, the full Australian specs haven't been officially locked in yet. You could argue this is a competitor to the Hyundai Ioniq 5N. Sorry to bring up Hyundai again, but yeah, this is going to be priced from around 120 grand, which is very similar to the Hyundai Ioniq 5N. Looking at the, some of the closer details in person, it looks, yeah, it looks stunning. Uh, the rear end especially, it's got these big wide haunches that stick out, very chunky diffuser underneath, and this full width tail light makes it look very futuristic. Having a closer look though, the front brakes, they do have Brembo calipers, although it doesn't really say, advertise that they're Brembo that, that well, but they are Brembo calipers. But the discs themselves are pretty basic. They don't look like anything special. They're not cross drilled or anything like that. And they're not even floating discs. For a vehicle like this, I think you need floating discs because it is quite heavy, almost two tons. 
and most sports cars do. Basically, what it means is the disc can heat up and expand and contract as it cools down. And that helps with longevity, but it also reduces the chances of the disc warping. So when you keep doing that with a solid disc or solid mounted disc, the disc will get hot and then start to warp and bend. And that's when you get that shuddering feel. So I think they really should have fit floating discs on first impressions anyway. Again, the final specs for Australia have not been confirmed. It does feature staggered width tires though, 275s on the back and 245s on the front. That should be perfect for a vehicle like this. And it will be available in a number of colors, including a vibrant bright yellow, the red that you can see here in the pictures, as well as gray, dark gray, and silver. You'll also be able to get different interior combinations with red seats and red steering wheel and so on. Other highlights, a Bose sound system, eight speakers, plenty of connectivity and a range of around 580 kilometers on the CLTC cycle. Again, local specs are yet to be confirmed. Let me know what you think though. Are you looking to order one of these or would you buy one of these? My personal opinion, if I've got 120 grand, I'm not really gonna spend it on a, not so much the brand that's not well known, but just the brand doesn't have a reputation for building high-end super sports cars. I'm gonna go with something that's, a brand that has been building that kind of thing, if that's what I'm after anyway. I mean, if it was me, I'd have to buy an SUV for the kids or whatever to put all their, their crap in the back. But yeah, if I was going to buy something like this, I would probably go for a, uh, a brand that has been doing it for a while. Again, though, very daring of MG to do this. I think it would look good in the showrooms, having that sort of supercar look straight away. You walk in, wow, that's interesting. But I'm not sure about how many will sell and hit the roads. Let me know what you think in the comments below. It officially goes on sale in October.